Hey guys, it's Paul here, and I've got a vintage uh, kind of late 90s Delta Unisaw, and I absolutely love this saw. It's been really served me well. The Achilles heel is the stock blade guard that came with it. It's very flimsy, and it's really a pain to put on and take off the saw. Uh, and so, therefore, I don't use it that much, um, I have to admit. Not a good choice, but that is kind of the way it is. So what I have on here now is a shark guard. Uh, this is an aftermarket upgrade. Uh, that can fit virtually any table saw. Uh, they have different uh, mounting brackets and so forth. So this is set up specifically for the Delta Unisaw. So the construction of this is uh, really high quality. Um, it's, it's Lexon and what I measured it at was uh, n about 70% thicker than the stock guard. Very heavy duty construction seems to be very durable. Really simple but well made and modular so you can take components off and upgrade various components of it so it's kind of a platform uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so it's uh, the modularity allows you to easily take the uh, blade guard off and expose just the splitter. So it has a unique splitter design on it that they call a manual riving knife. So it has some of the attributes of a riving knife in that it, and there's different sizes so I have one that's off the saw, it has a curve, an arc that follows the blade, uh, and it can be adjusted up and down with the blade. It's adjusted manually versus a true riving knife, which would be adjusted automatically as you raise and lower the blade. But you can maintain a, a consistent gap around the perimeter of the blade. Uh, and it also remains below the, the tallest height of the blade or can be adjusted below that height so that it can be left in place for through cuts such as dados. So there's really no reason that you would ever have to fully remove uh, the splitter from the unit. But it's a high quality splitter, uh, it comes in three, uh, the splitter thickness options, there may be more, but I have three here uh, to choose uh, one that goes with the with the thickness of the blade that you're using. Now you could also uh, use the thinner uh, of the uh, of the splitters and align it to the right side of the blade uh, or the I should say the fence side of the blade so it doesn't have to be the exact thickness of the blade if you do it that way and that's the way I, that I have it set up uh, on here my splitter is a little bit thinner than the blade and I just have it aligned perfectly to the to the right side of the blade on the mounting bracket that mounts directly to the splitter and allows you to attach the the blade guard uh, to the unit uh, there are anti-kickback poles on there. So these are, what I really like about these is that they can be engaged or disengaged. So I'm, I typically would not use these, I don't think. Uh, if I have the splitter in place, I feel like that's kind of a belt and suspenders. The splitter provides the um, uh, anti-kickback mechanism that I'm looking for. The anti-kickback pawls, I would use maybe as a hold down if I was running some thin material. So I can, rem I can use the, uh, the spring mechanism, lift it up, pull it off of the mounting pin, and drop it down for the cut or cuts that I want and then prop them back up into position. So that's kind of a, a nice feature that they pop up out of uh, position. You don't have to remove them from the saw. So if you're subject to OSHA inspection, uh, those do need to be in place installed on the saw. So this allows you to keep them there and only use them when it makes sense for you to use them. So there are also these aftermarket uh, throat inserts available. Uh, the insert that comes with the saw uh, can no longer be used uh, with the shark guard in place because that tab mechanism uh, doesn't work with the spacing that you would want uh, for the splitter to be uh, positioned more closely to the blade. So, so that won't work so they provide uh, or offer uh, optional zero clearance that you can uh, plunge a blade through and set at a zero clearance or standard clearance uh, inserts which I normally prefer for most cuts just to get better dust collection draft through that uh, but for you know cutting sheet goods or whatever. Uh, it's nice to have a zero clearance option uh, as well. Um, one of the neat things that I don't have installed uh, on the guard currently, uh, and I will at, at some point when I kind of figure out how I'm going to permanently install this, uh, but it's got the option to have a dust collection port installed directly into the blade guard, giving you the ability to run a dust collection hose. I love that idea. Uh, I would, like I said, I would like to do that at some point and will likely do that if I hang on to this saw 
uh, I'll mount it uh, in, in some way, shape, or form to dust collection. They have three different sizes available. Uh, I believe this is two and a half, three inches, and four inches. Uh, my initial uh, instinct would be to use the four inch, uh, but I read a little bit uh, on the on the website for Shark Guard that that is a. Uh, it's likely that that would actually bring so much airflow it starts sucking the workpiece up. So I might just go with the with the two and a half inch port and see how that goes, and the, and then I can run a a lighter hose up and over the the table saw. The Shark Guard also has the option to install this LED light, uh, which I thought was kind of, uh, I don't know, unnecessary, but I really like uh, the light that it casts down at the blade. So a good safety rule is to always keep your eye on that blade, know where it is at all times, and know where your hands are relative to the blade. This really highlights that and lets you keep an eye on that very easily. Installation out of my saw was really straightforward. All I had to do was remove the, uh, the mounting block that was in place, both front and rear, for the splitter uh, that uh, was part of the the uh, original stock blade guard. Remove those and then use the mechanisms that came with the shark guard for installing this. So this has one mount point. Um, don't need to have the additional mount point on the rear of the saw, which is nice. Uh, I would not have had to uh, cut this big hole in my uh, outfeed table if I had uh, gone with this originally. Um, so very nice uh, installation process. Took me probably I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, I suppose, before I had the old one out and the new one installed and maybe another five minutes to get it all kind of dialed in, level flush with the table and get everything aligned with the, with the saw blade. Now they do have some instructions on the website for mounting this, suspending it from the ceiling, which I think looks really neat. That would make it even easier. Uh, you wouldn't have to uh, mount it, dismount it. You would just raise it and lower it to get it out of the way when you need to access things below. So that's, I think, a good consideration. I may do that someday, um, but for now, I, it's it's straightforward enough. I find that I can go through the entire process of removing the guard assembly, making a height adjustment, and removing er, er, and placing everything back in place uh, in less than 30 seconds. So that sort of passes the test for me to say, uh, it's simple and quick enough for me to actually use it, adjust it as I go, uh, and not have an excuse to remove it uh, and, and drop down my, my safety guard. Another thing that I really like about using it is the, the design is really well thought through in terms of when you're feeding uh, material through, it has a, just a really gentle slope in the front and allowing that workpiece to slide right under there. The old one, I'd have to kind of nudge it. It was a little bit more blunt and I'd have to kind of bump it sometimes to pop that blade guard up, which felt really unsafe. This just slides under it effortlessly and then once it's under there, it engages this roller on the front of the unit, which really helps it just glide underneath there. So very thought out uh, mechanism and uh, really uh, a nice feel when you're using it. So that kind of wraps up my preliminary look at the Shark Guard. Um, let me know if you have questions down below. I'm, I'm going to continue to use this and I'll develop uh, uh, you know, more of an opinion about it um, and then I'll provide updates down below. If there's more to it, uh, maybe in my final, if I get a final elaborate installation, maybe I'll do a video on that. We'll see. But um, I'm really pleased with it so far. I think this is a, a great design, really well-made product, uh, and I look forward to the, the increased safety that I'm going to have in my woodworking now thanks to the shark guard so thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you found it useful if so please give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe and come back for more woodworking wood turning and DIY and tool related videos take care